So greetings fellow humans and welcome to a discussion video about why I will never grow up and I read and write uh, middle grade fiction. If you've never read me before, my name is J.D. Estrada, welcome to the channel. Um, this is a middle grade short story collection that takes place in the dream world that I am, the daydreams on the Sherbet Shore. And this is my middle grade <coughs> a fantasy title given to fly. Um, I'm 41. I love reading middle grade and I love writing middle grade uh, for different reasons. Um, if you have a reading slump or something of the sorts, uh, for me, honestly, uh, middle grade is one of my go-to things that, uh, or go-to genres or age group books that uh, I access so that I can get past the slump. Uh, poetry is one, uh, graphic novels, comics is another one, and uh, middle grade is another one. I realized this uh, some time ago that when I was feeling slumpish, um, or just wasn't compelled to read what I had home. I would go to a bookstore and I would check science fiction and I would check fantasy and blah, 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 poetry, whatever, nonfiction in case I wanted, I found something for research. And then I would stroll past the middle grade section and I would get so excited and so happy because I love middle grade and middle grade is a lot of fun for a lot of reasons. So number one of reasons of why uh, middle grade is fun, it's super imaginative. I'm not saying that science fiction and high fantasy uh, and fantasy and horror aren't creative and aren't imaginative. It's just that the conventions of kids books, um, I think, lends itself more to be creative and to bend rules more. You know, when you're a kid and you see a jungle gym and it's a spaceship, it's the most natural thing in the world. Uh, you see a little, a little hollow in a big bush, and it's a cave to the underworld. And you, you know, portal fantasies have a lot of that when, when you explore it in middle grade. Us in Wonderland has that. A Wizard of Oz is not a portal fantasy, but it it is middle grade. <coughs> and I, I could go through a variety of books and movies and video games that are catered to a younger audience. And it's just more chill and it's more relaxed and it's often about the trip. And there could be a little strife and there could be a little suffering, but not always. And at least for me, uh, when I wrote, when I wrote uh, Given to Fly, uh, I wanted to write a book without violence. That's what I set out to do and just have something that, that meant a lot to me. And, you know, it's about a young boy, 11 year old boy who dreams about flying and finds out that there's no magic in his home uh, for a very good reason. It lives further down the road and it's got a lot of quirkiness and it's very whimsical and there's a lot of puns and I do a lot of tributes to books that are near and dear to me. And it was a whole lot of fun and it was very refreshing and sometimes we read stuff that's so heavy and so deep that we need something to cleanse the palate. And for me, middle grade often um, results in being the, the palate cleanser. Um, for me, when it comes to middle grade, there's no wrong age to read middle grade and enjoy middle grade. Good middle grade, or what I consider good middle grade, is always going to take you back and it's always going to invite you to go on an adventure and have fun and just travel. Um, some people love Percy Jackson. I'm not a fan. Um, I'm not a fan because I read Percy Jackson and I felt old and it made me feel old and I'm 41 and I'm, I know that I'm not ancient, but I'm not a, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. So I, I read Percy Jackson and it made me feel old, but I read Artemis Fowl and I read the Chronicles of Narnia and I read the Hobbit and I read um, the Phantom Tollbooth, and I read Alice in Wonderland, and I read Peter Pan, and I read the early uh, Harry Potter books, and I read so many things, uh, the entire Oz Chronicles, The Borrowers, uh, the list of, of middle grade books that, that are near and dear to me that, that make me smile. It's long, and, 
and I do hope to contribute to that because it's, again, I read Chronicles of Narnia this year, and it was just as good, if not even better, because I had trepidation when I was going to do the reread. I'm like, am I still going to enjoy this? And I did, and a lot. Uh, and it's not just writing on nostalgia and on it being the first book that, that truly got me into reading, that I was like, this is the best book ever. I was in third grade or fourth grade, I'm not exactly sure. So that's eight or nine. That's 30 plus years of, of saying this is one of my favorite books, and I don't think that's ever gonna change. Um, I've, I've been reading The Hobbit since I was 13. And I'm gonna keep rereading. I'm probably gonna reread it in, in a couple weeks uh, as, as a reward. I think I'm gonna uh, finish my Goodreads uh, challenge early. And one of my rewards is gonna be to read The Hobbit because why not? But in the end, some people feel like they need to ask permission to enjoy any type of book. Um, I enjoy Little Girl. I enjoy horror, science fiction, fantasy, urban fantasy. I even enjoy YA. Uh, I enjoy books that some people hate and hate some people, uh, some books that people love. You know, to each their own, but middle grade, the entire Royal Doll collection. These are kids' books and I don't care. They make me happy and I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a long, a long review and, and, and comprehensive uh, video of all the Royal Doll books that I read in I think I have the, the collection. Wait. <clears throat> Let me here, here's the collection that I'm gonna do a review, and I'm gonna give you my ranking. I'm gonna rank Roald. That's gonna be one of my my future reviews. So stay tuned for that. Why? Because it's fun, and there are so many ways that Roald Dahl is fun. By the way, I know some people are gonna say, "Oh my God, he was whatever." Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, The Fantastic Mr. Fox, Matilda, uh, The Big Friendly Giant, all books that uh, make me smile. Look at me, look at me, look at me smiling. Um, and it invites you to be young and to always be a dreamer, and I love that. Uh, some books take themselves too seriously. Middle grade books often don't, and sometimes we need a little bit of that. We need a little bit of magic, a little bit of madness, uh, and an invitation to once again see a jungle gym and see a spaceship and see a bunch of clouds and wonder if there are bears living in the clouds and see a little portal and wonder what would happen if we got on our knees and crawled through that hole. So how about you? Do you like middle grade? Do you think you've outgrown middle grade? And if you do, that's fine. That's your jam. That's your shtick. My shtick is that I'm never going to grow. Uh, maybe, maybe horizontally, because I, I do a lot of taste tests and I like candy a lot. But, you know, in terms of age and having fun, I'm always going to be willing to have fun and be silly because life is too short to take things too seriously. In terms of my books, um... I showed you Given to Fly. Uh, next year, I'm going to be working on the second adventure. And I showed you The Daydreams on the Sherbert Shore. And the second volume is in beta readers. So um, we will talk about this more. And actually, since we are living in such heavy times, I'm actually going to be doing uh, readings of The Daydreams. So... I'm gonna do them uh, probably live to embarrass myself wonderfully. And I have an idea about that. Before I do those live reads, I'm gonna do a video about what I'm gonna do and how I need your help or the help of someone that you think might be interested in this trip. So I'll leave it at that because I have a lot of things in mind. And so until next week, chat, Peace, love, and mock your olds. Uh, be kind. Rewind. If you don't know what that means, that just means that I'm a geriatric millennial. And that is why I read middle grade. So that I don't feel like a geriatric anything. So till next time, cheers.